Hello, this is Clint May with CDM International. Welcome to the Director's Training for NMI Kids and LITs. We talk about the box. This box represents all the things you've been taught as a Christian educator. Uh, for myself, I have three seminary degrees. I've been to multiple children's pastors conferences, trainings, I've taught trainings, and my heart was taught in many cases about developmental styles and learning styles of children, all these kind of things, with the heavy influence of Peter Shea and other teachers, and I realized that this idea of ministry is really a trapping us, and it traps God and puts him in a box. And basically in church life, you find yourself in a situation where this is what I've been taught, and these are the parameters, and these are the learning styles of children. The challenge is, is when we get trapped in this situation, there's really very little fruit in what we do. But what we want to look at is understand that it's what the box is, is this is the things we've been taught and what we understood is how you do ministry. Then you've got people who have finally freed up from that, that box and they can carry that box along, but they carry those ideas and they're not really truly free to do what God has called them to do. And then you've got folks who've stepped beyond the box and they've become free to do ministry as God intended. In the box is sometimes you might look at as we do Sunday school, we've been taught a certain way, we bring kids in a room, we have them sit around a table and we talk and we do crafts and things like that. And we've been taught that this brings success, this is how kids learn, but in too many cases it removes the Holy Spirit's work in their life and the power of God's Word. What kids desire is to have a hunger and to be a part of what's going on in that disciple group. Be beyond the box is moving beyond what we've been taught to an idea that God can do anything he wants in the life of a child. This young lady on the left there is Sarah and her friend Haley, and they're in a park, and they were teaching about five or six friends and sharing the gospel there. Sarah and Haley just got back from a mission trip to San Marcos, Texas, and Sarah had an idea. She said, I can do this in my own neighborhood. They set it up, they canvassed, they did four days of Bible study, and they both led four children to Christ in this Bible study. This is another child on a mission trip to Norman, Oklahoma. Sarah on the left in the yellow shirt, and these guys were in a Bible study near a mobile home park and led many children to Christ, but the difference here is, is these guys are teaching the Bible study themselves. They're not being taught, but they have been released and empowered to do ministry. Give me a little history of, of LIT. In 1999, I worked in a camp called Fort Lone Tree in Captain, New Mexico. My dream was to be in camp ministry. I thought that was where I was supposed to be. Backing up, I started children's ministry in the year 1989 when I started seminary and began my training. But through that time, I had a deep desire and a passion for discipleship. So as I was in, in when I came to seminary, I thought I was going to be a camp director. God had a greater idea. I started out a little church. Uh, I began ministry there. I really worked with children, enjoyed it, and I had a deep desire to see them grow in their faith and have a hunger for Christ. For about 10 years, I, in, I attended conferences. I was exposed to many different things and many different trainings. I graduated from seminary in 1997 with three degrees. But one of the things that began to work in my mind was when I went to Fort Lone Tree, which had been a dream. I was going to be a camp director, and I was there about a year and a half. They had this program called Leaders in Training. And these Leaders in Training were students in the 11th and 12th grade. They also had Nehemiah teens, which were junior high students, and in the middle they had CITs, counselors in training. I had 20 college students there who worked for me, and we had the LITs who worked and camped and stayed in the cabins with the, the college students, and they ran the camp basically. I had an 18-year-old girl who ran Excel spreadsheets, and she did the whole programming of the camp. It was quite amazing. What I learned at Fort Longtree was this, that students and, and youth had gifts to do service. They could teach, they could lead. They met many kids to Christ that year, the year and a half I was there. And I was amazed. But a question began to, to run in my heart is, is this for kids too? Can children do this? 
what I didn't realize when I went to this dream of being in camp ministry is God began to draw me back and gave me a hunger to be back in church life. I moved back to Corpus Christi in 2001. I was there about a year and a half, and then I went and I moved to Fort Worth to Wedgwood Baptist Church in 2002. When I arrived at Wedgwood, they told me I've got about two weeks to start a program. So I had the idea of LIT, preteen LIT, and I had written a book called The Journey, which took the concepts of master life and the disciples and equipment disciples will from uh, NAF Press. So I took these ideas and I started at Wedgwood in 2002, and this is my first group of LITs. Anyway, but looking at the group here, the first week I started up, I had people have an application and they were required to do a Bible study, a daily devotion, and those were the requirements I started out with. And I told parents, your responsibility is to help. And then we went on a retreat to Glen Rose, Texas. And while we were there, I trained the kids how to share their faith. About three weeks later, we went on and did a mission project in apartments called Woodway and the Greens. And Catherine, this young lady here with the glasses, and another young man, Raymond, and another girl, you can't see her, whose name was Bethany. On about the third day of the ministry in the apartment, I shared the gospel. I invited kids to accept Christ as their Savior and respond. Well, Catherine and Raymond and Bethany, all three sat down and they led three children to Christ. And they counseled with them. They were fifth and sixth graders. And so I had a really ringing thought in my mind, okay, is this true? Can they really do this? And so when I sat down and I talked to them, they knew exactly what they'd done. All three of those children knew it. Well, the following summer, I had my next group of LITs, fifth and sixth graders, and we went to another cart complex. And I was quite amazed at their boldness and their desire and their hunger to lead. In 2004, I really felt the Lord leading me to, to stretch it even more, and I went to my pastor and said, I'm going to go to Corpus Christi, six and a half hour drive. But these kids, uh, what we're doing differently is we're going to teach them how to teach. And there was a little bit of surprise in my pastor's face and his eyes. But he trusted me, and I followed the Lord. I was a little bit nervous as we went to Corpus Christi, wondering if I really heard from God or not. Well, when we were there, Mark, this little boy Mark, taught the first day in an apartment complex. He shared the gospel, and seven people accepted Christ, and three of those were teenagers. So we began to really be shocked, and we were amazed what God was doing. And one of the men that I highly respect is our church counselor, Kevin. He was there, and he witnessed Mark teach, and he just said, Clint, he had such confidence to share that night, Mark told me that, that um, when I was teaching Brother Clint, he said, I felt a fire and a burning in my heart. The young lady back here in the back, Amy, she had met a kid about the third day, and she became very burdened in her heart. And as we would do worship at night, she, uh, was, she stayed in the worship center for almost an hour, just weeping and crying as she came. He said, Brother Clint, my heart was so burdened for him. It was just so torn up for this little boy. And the next day, she led him to the Lord. In 2005, we took a group of about 50 students to Jersey Village, Texas. And we began to see something really unique as God took these kids. And the first night of the week, or well, that Sunday night we were there, He truly fell upon them and He broke them. And they wept and they cried over their sins. And we began to see a movement of the Lord that I've never seen in all the years of ministry that I've worked with. These kids became on fire and passionate for the lost. They went to call their grandparents, their parents, anybody that didn't know Christ and share the gospel with them. That week on this trip alone, they led 50 people to Christ. They became unscathed. They were empowered by the Holy Spirit. We didn't do anything. We didn't manipulate anything. We were there and God showed up and He moved in a powerful way. 2006, we went to Pineville, Louisiana. We had another church join us there. And God began to bless, and, and, the, and the word spread about LIT and how it was moving. And we had tremendous success there as well. We began to see, well, it wasn't just our church having this happen. It was the other church. 2007, we took three churches with us to, 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 to San Marcos, Texas. And this is a tremendous trip. We saw many kids' lives touched and the Spirit of God moving. 
2008, we took three more churches with us. And we saw this is one of our uh, most powerful experiences, I believe, is there was a 97 students or children and youth who accepted Christ on this trip. It was amazing what the Lord did. 2009, we went to Kerrville, and God just really blessed. We had five churches on this trip. LITs began to expand even more, and the things, the very things we were wondering, well, is it happening just in our church, or is it happening in others? We saw the same thing. These guys became on fire, unscathed for Christ and the gospel, and they came back home changed. And the adults who witnessed what they were doing, they were leading worship, they were teaching, they were sharing the gospel and doing all these amazing things for the Lord. And God just empowered them in a powerful way. In 2010, we took, uh, there was 278 people who went to Norman, Oklahoma. We stayed in five different locations on this trip and we began to notice the one thing was God had a new plan. And uh, through all these different, there was five different locations each one experienced the same thing as brokenness over sin. They began to pray. They would meet lost people. They would witness. And these guys led close to 138 people to Christ. In 2011, we had just a tremendous trip. We went to, to Little Rock, Arkansas. In 2010, this is a wonderful trip and we saw multiple we had 10 groups, 10 churches that went with us, and God moved and set in the same way again. As it spread, it wasn't just a Wedgwood thing. We began to see it happening in all these other churches. We stayed in five locations throughout the city, and the Spirit of God moved in a powerful way, and it was an amazing trip. 2011, we had 278 who went to Little Rock, Arkansas from four different states, and again, God moved in such a powerful way. We saw 138 professions of faith on this trip. Isaiah 43, 19 says this, Look at the new thing I'm going to do. It is already happening. Do you see it? This is one of my favorite verses because God is doing something brand new, and he's doing it in our midst, and it's not just at our church, but it's happening around the country and he's raising up a generation for himself to do great things. A great book that I would encourage you to read is Kid Lee by Dr. Alan E. Nelson. A wonderful book, great insights. It really backs up and, and supports exactly what we're doing here and what you'll be doing in the church. Real briefly some things that he talks about is the 1013 window and there's some things that you need to understand why it's critical. George Barna says what a person believes by age 13 is pretty much what they're going to die believing. Very important this age group. Number two, most 13 year olds believe they know everything that there is to know about the Bible and hence they're not open to learn other things. So what's the problem here? Let's look at this. There's a chart and this is what Dr. Nelson shares is that 18, the ages between 10 to 13 years of age are very critical in the moral development of children. What happens is this is a chart that shows you there's a, the, as the line goes up, there's a peak that happens between 10 and 13 years of age, which are very critical for, to make sure that moral foundations are in place. Secondly, what he's found is you can teach, take these kids at this age group and teach them leadership skills on a repetitive mode. And what happens is they, they, it sticks with them for life. So. You take between the ages of 10 and 13, there's this peak that's happening in their life, and you want to also realize is the cognitive learning skills are being developed at the same time. But from their research, they found is if, if you put kids in leadership roles, which LIT does, and you do these things over and over, giving them opportunities on and on to, to have success, there's great things that will happen. It sticks with them, and they carry it on into adulthood.